the key initiators of the uh, CPTM quality and standards inclusion. Uh, and um, uh, Fadila, you're welcome. You're welcome to the hub. Thank you. And uh, I'm, I don't know how exactly it happened that it's the first time that you're coming to the hub. there is a lot of uh, things that has happened and uh, since I'm coming back from the ISO General Assembly in St. Petersburg uh, and since I have to come through London it is, it is a must for me to come to, to CPTM office and to be updating with all my, my CPTM colleagues about what we have done and uh, Mihela was there with me together we briefed many things in the ISO General Assembly in particular uh, meeting up with all friends of CPTM during the ISO General Assembly? Actually, it was, uh, I, I, just uh, uh, an extraordinary uh, development that you could see from the last four years, as you said, up to now, in uh, the confidence that the Chief Executive, or the Director General of, of, the, uh, of yeah, but also the Chief Executive of the National Bureau of Standards, oh, okay. The smart partners, who some of them happen to have been physically present in Dar es Salaam, and that in itself put them on the stage, global stage, but uh, as well as in national context. But uh, it was a very different uh, Bureau of Standards in Swaziland, of Zimbabwe, of uh, Tanzania, of um, uh, Uganda, of Botswana different from the way I have perceived that they were able to become visible within the ISO group, which is a very large and uh, one of the most, uh, yeah? A yes. few years ago, when we went in Oslo because of Tanshi Tajuddin, mm -hmm. and then we went to India. So I must say, CPTM as such does not, as, as joined the convener, I'm not necessarily uh, part of the ISO uh, kind of framework, the annual conferences, but this is the third time I joined and I've seen the difference. So uh, hopefully that confidence comes also a little bit from the smart partnership activities and of the group. Yes, Mihaela, so, exactly. So this is the energy and the momentum we should continue to build. Mm -hmm. All right, we've seen uh, what we were before and then where we are today, we should be pleased with ourselves mm -hmm. and I, I believe we should do more. We are the emerging markets, for example, this has been recognized by the, by the developed nations mm -hmm. and we should prove to them that we are the emerging market where, where, and we should be also as together as one. That means that and standards and quality is a foundation, it's a basis to this, uh, we as an emerging market. Without quality in whatever that we do in our businesses, I mean, I don't think anybody would want to come to us and to be even buying our products and services, for example. So, um, yes, we are creating a difference now. We are together now. And uh, maybe a little bit of update. Now that uh, I'm in the council of ISO. Um, you are a member, I am executive um, member. Yes, yeah. uh, and uh, thanks to all of my friends from CPTM where I was voted in, Malaysia was voted in, and we were the most popular, mm -hmm. and that was last year. We, we saw that in uh, San Diego, and I will be in the council until end of 2014. Mm -hmm. So within my term of two years, Mihela, I'm going to do things mm -hmm. which is good for us in CPTM to be making sure that whatever activities of the ISO is of benefit to us, especially into driving uh, standards and quality into our businesses mm -hmm. and hopefully it is being taken up well not only by our leaders but also by our industry so that we can sell our products mm -hmm. to the world. Yeah, I mean what, one thing that uh, I felt very kind of uh, satisfied with is that uh, the idea of, uh, as we call in ISO, uh, engaging the stakeholders, particularly the policy makers, that's a contribution that through CPTM Smart Partnership Movement we are able to make or to show the way to do it. Yes. So obviously in 
Tanzania in Dar es Salaam. That is what we did for the first time. We had quality in standard a whole four hours um, uh, agenda. Uh, hopefully, if there is progress at the national level, we will be able to maintain that in 2014 in South Africa. And, uh, you know, leaders slowly will uh, try to pay the right attention to the quality and standards in the country. Certainly. But it depends very much, isn't it, of the national context. What yes, do you think? Uh, yes, I, tru I, so I truly agree, totally yeah. with you, yeah. Michaela. Uh, even at the ISO level, we have uh, got the attention mm -hmm. of the world. But we at the national level, I think we should also do our part. The commitment of us uh, mm -hmm. in the national standards bodies to be helping the industry within our own territory, I would like to uh, request that we should also be doing our part. Let's engage with our right stakeholders, stakeholders um, within our economies, for example, uh, with our government, uh, the regulators, for example, make sure that standards are being used for safety. And um, the industry, for example, they need, they need standards to be able for them to be able to produce quality products. Mm -hmm. All right? And, and then with the society, the consumers, how can we help? consumers so that they can get value for money. Mm -hmm. So so we, I think at our national level, we should be doing our part. We should go out and we should be reaching out. Mm -hmm. I would rather say the approach should be proactive mm -hmm. rather than be reactive, getting it. Um, rather than there is a request, I think we should be selling mm -hmm. the kind of services. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, we have been established by the government, so let's play our role at the national level. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Mm. Now, the, the, uh, I mean, in Malaysia, standards mm -hmm. already has quite a number of interfaces with so-called stakeholders. You were with the Chairman of Consumers yes, Association, right. so if you yeah. can explain to us how did you succeed to get him to come to ISO? Okay, that is uh, something interesting I would like to share with all of you. Um, when I first came in, I saw that um, quality products is something which everybody aspire. And I saw that the only thing to get this engaged is to getting the consumer association, making them to be wanting to be creating this pressure. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, in Malaysia, uh, I, I got myself engaged with a guy called uh, Datuk Manimutu. When you say got engaged with a guy, <laughs> what do you mean? It's just a smart funny uh, way of okay. saying I mean, a on relationship a, with right. professional that yes, right. uh, he got confidence. That's from right. The standard Bureau. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, we met him. It's just incredible. Yeah, we exposed him for the first time to an international meeting of ISO. He's a businessman. He is a businessman, and at the same time, he's got the consumer at heart. So he is currently the president of the Federation of Malaysian Consumer Association, and uh, he he drives this uh, agenda of the consumer needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw that, I brought him up to the international level, and he saw how much that the consumer can play a role mm -hmm. in in the. International level. So uh, since 2004, he came right. in, and um, and now in the year 2013, I think he has done a lot. He has contributed a lot, and uh, I would like to share with you, Mihela, that uh, effective 1st January 2014, Malaysia will be chairing the ISO Consumer Policy on Com uh, on, uh, Committee uh, mm -hmm. uh, of Kopulko. So I think there are things which we can do. All right, for the benefit of all of our colleagues in CPTM. So probably within uh, Swaziland, Uganda, Tanzania, we could use that. Uh, exactly. Uh, all right. I mean, let's leverage on each other's uh -huh. uh, area of interest and strength mm -hmm. to be making things good for our nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the most useful or some of the most useful new dimensions that you think at the ISO level? The International Standard Organization, maybe we explain to our smart partners, is not the only international organization preoccupied about standards, but it is one of the most uh, common denominator for all the standards, right? That's right. But what, what were the main topics? Uh, uh, in ISO? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, one of the main topics which we managed to bring to the, the interest of all is the... Um, Digital. Yeah, the, the digitalization of uh, the of the, the, mm -hmm. of the making standards accessible mm 
to, to everybody. That means that you don't have to have it in hard copy, for example. You can you can uh, have it through the standards body to be made available to the industry association within or to the companies in within our country. So we are, so but there are not people free of charge completely. Uh, yes, that's right. the point. But even then, I think being a member of ISO or Behera, we pay a fee. Uh -huh. All right. So I think the industry should take advantage of us being yeah. a member to ISO. Mm -hmm. Because this facility is being paid for, it is not free. So, for example, maybe we can work together with the industry how they can uh, contribute. Con yes, to the contribute to the membership. That's right. That's it. Through through um, the, if the industry can contribute the membership to the ISO through the standards body, mm -hmm. I think it is going to be a win-win. All right. That means that we're gonna we're gonna um, get you involved into the development of standards. Uh, of the world, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. and then eventually, when the standards becomes an international standard mm -hmm. for our product, mm -hmm. all right, we have already a ready-made product based on our standard at the ISO level to be selling to the world, mm -hmm. and I'm sure like the EU market, right? Yeah. This is where mm -hmm. most of us are doing our trade. So, so mm -hmm. I, I I believe that the the industry companies. This is how we should be working in synergy so with the but, body. but the industry is a, an industry or a business uh -huh. is another group yes. of stakeholders, right? As you call them. Right. So uh, they are not as much engaged with standards bureau. I think now the big ones are big ones, as you said. They are taking care of standards. Mm -hmm. The small ones might be too small. Exactly. So what's the That's SMEs, if I can use that, these, these are the, and the majority of our businesses in our re, our country are the SMEs. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, that there are roles to play by the government to be helping the SMEs. Mm -hmm. But it, nothing will happen much if the SME does not come forward to be working together with us and to be wanting what are the standards that is good for them. Mm -hmm. All right, to making making sure that they comply to whatever standards mm -hmm. that they want to market their products. So I, I think this is one one area, Mihela, we want to work together, mm -hmm. all right, to be making sure that the, our SMEs are as good as the other SMEs out there mm -hmm. from the developed nation. But I suppose uh, being an SME, you require, of course, you require quality and standards, and you require support to maintain or to get that. Uh -huh. But the support is financial uh -huh. and professional. And that's why this financial inclusion, if it is being interfaced or in connected to the needs of SMEs, okay. it, logically, yes, it's, they should have, they should be. A yes, I I believe so. I mean, we cannot do without the facilities of these financial uh, people coming in, mm -hmm. for example. But this is one area we hope that the uh, the financial. Uh, Institutions will be coming in and to be supporting these kind of activities. Where, um, for example, if you want to put this as a requirement for companies to be producing products, making sure that their products is according to certain standards and quality. Mm -hmm. So that component, I, I, I truly hope that. So in other words, if you want a loan, yes, right, exactly. Oh uh, yeah, you might need to have quality and standards uh, exactly. part of it or That's support right. or venture capital. Yes. Uh -huh. If that should should be the way mm -hmm. for us in order for us to be where I think all the developed nations are. Do you think that is a uh, towards regulation? <laughs> <laughs> this is something we hope that we the, the, the financial institution should relax a little bit That's to making right. sure that they should be doing it this way and that way. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I think if you see out there in the world more and more of the of the requirements are being directly not being regulated. Yeah, there is a deregulation. De de exactly. Well. So yeah. I think that should Minimum also regulation. be the approach as well. Mm -hmm. It should come from the industry rather than being be imposed. Yeah, uh, otherwise, we are very much um, we are still waiting. You know what else is there for us rather than getting it from the industry, all right, and uh, making sure that. Um, they are sustainable, mm -hmm. so we hope these financial uh, institutions are being given that kind of relaxation. Now, the, the leveraging technology from uh, Dar es Salaam, you've been part of it, uh -huh. and uh, there were 
quite a number of Malaysian uh, representation from uh, Ministry of Science, Technology and uh, Business is with them. And um, the Chief Cabinet Secretary, the Prime Minister was very proud that he had a representation from almost everybody. And of course, uh, Bureau of Standards was there to himself. I, I mean, how do you think we would be able to follow up from Dar es Salaam uh, the idea of the groups to continue to understand, deepening the understanding mm -hmm. of the relevance of the Malaysian spirit on smart partnership, Meaning in addition to the benefits mm -hmm. that the Malaysians themselves will get through that? that is going towards 2014 is important we that's right I get think that uh, what's bit. important here is uh, being able to translate what we have uh, achieved mm -hmm. in uh, Dar es Salaam into our national activities this is that is very pertinent mm -hmm. you know so that uh, whatever that we we have achieved in Dar es Salaam we translate them at our national uh, level let's do our activities now that we know each other mm -hmm. in Dar es Salaam we can always communicate and at the same time we hope that there are success stories for us to be able to come back next year in the year 2014 and to be able to share mm -hmm. you know what we have done so far mm -hmm. and um, and what more we can be doing for example mm -hmm. but what's key is just not having a dialogue for example right which is very good but let's translate that at the national at level, the national level. Yeah. so that's key Mihela mm -hmm. see to whatever that we are I, doing. I'm happy that you can hear the as you said, a number of our documents and whatever we do uh, probably don't pay enough attention to, as you said, the, the, what is behind all this CPTM cooperative framework mm -hmm. of the smart partners and uh, what progress one made in each country. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But um, in relation to these uh, visions and the three inclusions, uh, but um, probably with your help, mm -hmm. we will try to articulate even more clear in the language that uh, the business, the view of standards, the, uh, everybody else understands about what is the benefit of being part of this CPTM Smart Partnership Framework. Yes, yeah? and yeah, this is something which yeah. we would like to come in and to be helping out and to complement what mm -hmm. we have done. While you've got the details of what, what all the achievements, I think what we would like to do is to do a bridge, a, a bridging between um, between us and uh, those out there who have never been involved, for example, in CPTM. Mm -hmm. What we have done, I'm gonna do. We maybe we do it in a, in a, in a manner of language yeah. that is understood to the public, for yeah. example. So this is something I. Um, as if I you do it in, in Malaysian context. That's right. right. And then we'll try to see how in Swaziland context. Exactly. And so on. That's yeah. right. So we would like to propose to start, all right? And then, for example, uh, it will be emulated with all of our other colleagues of CPTM. So that the business very, is uh, very welcome. Right. Very welcome because we have an AGM. Very welcome your support on that. We'll be okay. uh, AGM uh, <coughs> in November, the beginning of November, 8th of November. And uh, we have the typical sea planking interaction before that. So, uh, unless uh, the members, the smart partners, understand the benefits mm -hmm. that, and there, is, there are always new people, there will always be new people one need to understand. Exactly. There are people, veterans, who start in 95 or even before, who are probably a little bit fed up to explain what are the benefits. They think people will understand it. That's right. So there is always a need for new language, new approach to this. Yes, so, so, that's very helpful. so this will be something which we will try to contribute and let's see how we go from there. Mm -hmm. mm. One, one uh, thing that we just talked about was how do we actually try to, uh, between in the next six months, uh, before we start preparation quite heavily for the dialogue in South Africa, mm -hmm. how would we be able to uh, assist a few of the countries in the CPTM to, towards uh, uh, developing some guidelines? What, yes, what, um, what yeah, I, I would like to uh, propose, uh, Mihela, that we 
have some sort, as you mentioned, a guidelines, some sort of a checklist or whatever that you yeah. call it, so that it can be used something uh, for everybody to be making sure that to take stock where we are, and then to be able to see how much we have advanced or what more do we need to do. And uh, hopefully in the next six months, we are able to check with each other how much have I done, for example, what more do I need? It's particularly on the inclusion side. Uh, exactly, yeah. right. So I, I think it's leveraging on each other is very important. And uh, I mean, the, 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 the guideline on how to um, reach the uh, consumer or how to reach the business. That's right. Or yeah. the regulators. That's right. And maybe to have an interaction, at least one, mm -hmm. for the next six months. Yeah. If we don't have that in a number of countries, we are at the moment in Caribbean about, uh, with Bureau of Standards, mm -hmm. about three, not very active, in one or two quite active, mm -hmm. three islands. Mm -hmm. The others know about it and we keep them informed. Mm -hmm. In Southern Africa, probably it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there are about 15 there. And mm -hmm. SADC knows about it. In East Africa, uh, again, Uganda, Tanzania are, are leading. Rwanda was terribly interested to come in, and Kenya, of course, but, yeah. Um, in uh, Asia, we have you in Malaysia, but of course there are Sri Lankans that were terribly interested, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. to be part of it. Uh, in fact, they were in inviting us, like, in the next two months, two weeks, to go there, but, you know, we need to, yeah. yeah you so, know, based on regions, our our needs are different in terms of priority. Mm -hmm. So this checklist or guideline is going to be something which is common mm -hmm. and hopefully, eventually, we will come to a common uh, list of uh, things that we need and uh, hopefully also we, we, within our sub-regions mm -hmm. we are able to be groupings together and to be learning from each other and helping each other mm -hmm. into meeting our one common goal which is the, uh, as we know, the, the, the emerging in industry mm -hmm. Region, mm -hmm. you must have that goal, mm -hmm. and uh, the needs are different. Mm -hmm. All right, but even though we are different in terms of needs, uh, the way the approach could be the same. Absolutely. For example, right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. for example, I mean, this map partnership type of approach. Yep. It it worked in Namibia. We've seen that mm -hmm. when we tested that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, it worked probably in Mozambique when we came. In well, I didn't explain to you yet about it, mm -hmm. when we came from the innovation movement mm -hmm. uh, point of view. Um, so, yeah, I think early science technology in Zimbabwe, we came from that angle. So, yeah, probably there is quite a lot of economic partnership agreements mm -hmm. in uh, Barbados. Mm -hmm. So let's make it work. Yeah, we quite yeah. there are different priorities. Mm -hmm. Well, so what we will do is uh, we'll probably uh, get a uh, kind of um, message to all the Bureau of Standards chief executives who are part of the group and the new ones also, uh -huh. the Sri Lankans are new, for instance, and uh, probably Jamaica is also new. Mm -hmm. I'm very glad that quite a number of new Bureau of Standards, Rwanda wants to be involved, yes, yes more heavily. So um, it was good to have a Commonwealth dimension too. BSI initiated that. Uh, yeah, I think we, together, should, we should also acknowledge them, yeah. you know, for it's whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So what is happening in the next few months in with the Department of Standards in Malaysia? Ah, okay. I would like Besides to share. coming to us. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I just want to share something which is going to be very exciting um, in Malaysia. Sometime in late October this year. Uh, we hope to be launching our National Standards Compliance Program, meaning that, that this is a, a program where we want to work with the SMEs in about 12 sectors, identified mm -hmm. sectors in Malaysia, where we want to help the SMEs to be compliant to standards in the uh -huh. businesses, mm -hmm. so that uh, within the next three years, beginning of this year and three years down the road, we are able to show that standards have helped the companies to be uh, growing the businesses, yeah. mm -hmm. not only domestically, we're talking about going global. Mm -hmm. and but if you are very small, sorry? If you are very, very small, an SME, are you aspiring globally? 
Yes, I think uh, we should be supplying to the world. We're not talking about domestic here, no. Mm. We are talking about the world. Yeah. So, so that is the trigger. Mm. So, so um, when is that? When it will be in, uh, I think, hopefully on 21st and of October. October. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, we hope to get our uh, minister mm -hmm. to launch it. And minister then, of Science. Right? Yes, right. Minister of Science, uh, uh, Dr. Iwan, to be able mm -hmm. to launch this uh, compliance program. Mm -hmm. To benefiting the SMEs. There are many SMEs in Malaysia. 95% yes. of our industry in Malaysia are SMEs. Okay. Uh -huh. Some of them are small, high tech. Yes, right. But then again, as I said, you know, we are not, we are helping them to, to grow not not only for domestic. Mm -hmm. We are talking about to the world. Now the areas are probably quite large in agri business. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also. Mining and oil, we talked about. Yes, right. Because of Petronas. Yes, right. Yeah, this is where, yeah, I mean, uh, the suppliers to the oil and gas, uh, the, the mining, for example, right? So, all these suppliers uh, of these uh, companies, they, I hope they will come into this program. Mm -hmm. And agriculture also, uh, I believe, within our region, that's big. And uh, processed food mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, these are all areas of interest. Mm -hmm. So, if we uh, once this is launched, we want to share this with everybody and then hopefully that next year, uh, Mihela, if we were to have something where our industry can come on board and to be shared. That would be very, very important to mm -hmm. do that. I don't know if we could do something before South Africa, the da big dialogue, or if we could get a few together in Kuala Lumpur or somewhere in Malaysia. Okay, we'll, we'll look we at it. If we were to think right. for the new year, uh -huh. but before... The dialogue is unlikely to happen before October. Uh -huh. uh, I mean, it might happen August, whatever His Excellency still could decide. Maybe for the first quarter of 2014, because we have just That's launched it. it in October. So mm -hmm. give it a few months. Yeah. All right. And then yeah, because let's we need how... six months for That's each right. of the country to try to do something. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then maybe we can share in, in Kuala Lumpur or somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Right. That would be quite that. good before as a preparation towards uh -huh. 2014. Okay, we can do that. Very useful. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, Fadila, we're saying very much to you for, for stopping by in London. I understand, I couldn't mm -hmm. believe it, that you stopped specifically to, to try to take stock. It is always a pleasure uh, uh, yeah. communicating and working with you, Mihela. And as I said, this is uh, something which uh, we should make it happen. And as uh, I, I mentioned to you earlier, uh, something which Tune M has started and has grown until today, and then there's more to come. Let's uh, uh, make it better, and the emerging economies as that we is call them emerging markets from now yes, on. We're going right. to take Paris and Najib. That's what we call ourselves. Yes, we agree with that. Right. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, I mean the Prime Minister uh, Najib, right? Uh, the, the Prime Minister was very much enjoying that dialogue. I've seen that and seen it from other heads of government. Mm -hmm. He are, was absorbing, taking notes for, of everything. Mm -hmm. So uh, even if it doesn't look like when they go back immediately, the leaders, mm -hmm. they immediately kind of do something about it. It depends on the Bureau of Standards or the governor of the bank or whatever to try to take advantage of scientists, technology, take advantage of it. Exactly. So uh, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Fadila, and uh, thank you for uh, facilitating, actually, in ISO again, uh, the CPTM's uh, network vis-à-vis uh, -vis the ISO, because CPTM, as you know, is a common organization. Mm -hmm. We do not have uh, a formal uh, membership in ISO, but here we are professionally, we are alongside all the national bureau of standards. Thank you very much. So have a good trip tomorrow.